Good morning and uh, welcome to Morning Moments. I'm uh, going to continue the teaching that I've been doing for, uh, this is the third week on mental uh, health awareness. Uh, the first week we talked about the stigma of mental illness. Last week, uh, I don't know about you, but every time I look at these numbers, I'm startled by the numbers. We looked at the, at the numbers of mental illness and mental health, health issues. Today, we're going to take a step further in mental health awareness and talk, talk about why should we even be concerned or why should we even understand the issue of mental illness. And so I want to, I want to talk a little bit about that. Wrote a few things down here I want to just share with you and uh, comment about, uh, about uh, mental illness. You know, the basic knowledge and skills uh, of understanding the core of what's going on and understand the inf how the information that we learn about mental Ill illness itself fits into the bigger picture. N not every person that's going through a psychological distress has a mental health disorder, but as we saw last week when we looked at the numbers, it's a startling amount of numbers of, of one out of every five people in the United States have a mental health di diagnosis. The strains and the stresses and the challenges of today, uh, especially with what's going on the last year, year and a half, increases our vulnerability to and the likelihood of encountering many mental health problems, uh, many, many mental health disorders within our families, our friends, and even within ourselves. It's important to distinguish between a, a person experiencing mental health crisis and the person or the problem and the circumstances. You see, many people suffer in silence. Rather than risk that discrimination of what we talked about two weeks ago with the stigma, the ridicule of seeking help. So when we understand the very breakdown of, of what mental illness is and how it affects us, then, then we can do something maybe to help it internally for ourselves or for others you see none of us grow up in a vacuum we all are surrounded what with the attitudes that we have around us of the families and friends and that often influence the way and the ways that we ways that we don't even realize until ourselves the situation that we are in with mental illness and 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 the folks around us until we approach it and really look straight in, in on it the way we should we are never going to drop those preconceived ideas and our prejudiced I have often talked about the word prejudice means to prejudge. People who prejudge often say, you're this way because of that. You see, the misconceptions abound, abound about mental illness. And there are a lot of myths involved. And until we break down those barriers, and until we look at the what what mental illness does to us as a society and as families we're, we're not going to make the changes we need in an individual basis too often and I want to speak not only in a clinical standpoint, but a spiritual standpoint too. Too often, even our fellow people in church and in the spiritual world say, well, you just need to get over it. Without understanding 
all the ramifications and all the things that took place in getting that person to where they are the building blocks that happened at early childhood that that uh, that did not allow a person to develop emotionally so therefore there are pieces that are missing even from early childhood that needs to, we need to step back and go well what do we need what do we need to become stronger what do we need to build those things of trust and and um, assurance that you're, you're loved and cared for sometimes it's hard for us to get the best from what God has for us because of again those preconceived basic things that was told to us in early early childhood and it's a hard road that that's where a lot of issues of anxiety and depression stem from that's where a, a lot of our our basis comes from so once we understand in a very clinical systematic way about mental illness then then we can work at getting mentally well there's a lot I'm going to share in the next uh, several weeks uh, on Tuesdays. And when I talked about misconceptions, I think one of the things I want to talk about next week and really hit hard is the myths that people have. And there truly is a lot of myths within in, in the thoughts of mental illness. We can just get over it. Uh, it's all in your head. If, if you just if you just simply do this it'll be better and there's no simple answer to many time, many times uh, we accept that people are on a long road for physical battles but somehow we can't accept when somebody goes through the emotional battles of anxiety depression psychotic disorders uh, depression either it's unipolar or bipolar uh, the addictions the 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 terrible grip that phobias have on on people and and the list goes on and on we'll, we'll talk about it in detail so so if you are understanding starting to understand that there's a, the important to, to, importance to have more knowledge of this, I want you to keep coming back. I want you to keep watching these series either on YouTube or or on my my morning moments and pass it on uh, so, that, so that we can help the people around us. There's people in your household. Maybe there's you who've struggled. There's friends and neighbors and I don't think the numbers, as we talked about last week, are going to go down anytime soon with with the tension and the issues that's going on uh, with our country and our world. So please keep coming back for some more mental health awareness and uh, more on Tuesdays for the clinical setting and the clinical look at uh, mental health and mental illness. Thank you for joining me today and uh, keep coming on, keep coming back and keep passing it on and uh, keep tuning in to more morning moments thank you <laughs>